Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to teach you the ins and the outs of the Mosab Hit House software for the R9 wheelbase and Seto Corsa. So let's dive straight in. Uh, first off, we've got preset modes. Um, Seto Corsa is going to be found in GT here, um, and you can try out the default settings for a Seto Corsa. But if you want to create your own, let's carry on. Uh, the maximum steering angle in a set of course that is 1180. Um, so make sure you set this at 1180 to get authentic wheel locks. Um, one thing I have noticed that the game is, uh, well, the game doesn't have a soft lock on a per car basis. So if you set it at 1180 and you reach the end of the car's travel, let's say it's 600, the wheel will carry on exactly the same, but the car will not turn any further. If you want to match it on a per car basis, obviously you're going to be reducing this angle to match and you're going to be reducing it to match in game as well. Um, next up, we've got synchronous. That just matches the maximum limit and the maximum steering angles. Um, there's no need to have these different in a set of Corsa, so just keep them synchronized. Uh, next up, we have road sensitivity. Um, this is just a preset for how much vibration you'll feel through the wheels, like the road, the grass, the curbs, so on and so forth. Um, you can fine tune this even further in the FFB effect equalizer, uh, which I have done for this game, but we'll touch on that a little bit later. Uh, game force feedback intensity. Always leave this on 100. Nine newton meters isn't a lot when it comes to racing. Um, it's only good for matching performance road cars i believe um so if you're planning on driving gt3 cars with your moza r9 wheelbase just know you don't have enough um typically gt3 cars come in at around about 15 newton meters of torque so start saving those pennies if you want a more realistic experience but for now we've got an r9 wheelbase so we'll keep it on maximum um wheel speed this is how fast the wheel returns to center. I've settled on 30%. Uh, what I will say is the wheel, spe the, the wheel speed will change uh, depending whether you're on or off throttle, especially on front wheel drive cars and all wheel drive cars. So if the wheels are front wheels are driven, um, you will get a difference in return speed. So if you're on throttle, the wheel will return faster. If you're off throttle, it will return slower. Uh, I've settled on 30%, uh, but you can increase this or decrease it to your own preference. Uh, wheel spring strength. This is for games that don't have force feedback. So what this does is we'll turn the wheel to center regardless of the game's force feedback. Uh, this will just add extra weight that's unnecessary to the wheel um, and it just creates a horrible unrealistic driving experience. So a set of Corsa has force feedback, so just turn this off, just get it out of the way. Next up, wheel damper. Um, this adds weight to the wheel. Um, it's independent of the game. Uh, I've settled on 20%, but the higher you have this, the less refined feeling you're going to have through the steering wheel. So you won't be able to feel those road bumps so much if it's set at 50%, say. It's just going to be extremely heavy and excessively damp, so you won't feel much. Typically acceptable ranges for wheel damper, I found is between 15 and 25%. Um, a set of course, they felt really good at 20%, so I've just left it at that. Next up, we go to advanced settings. Uh, force feedback reversal, we want this off. This is just for games that are really, really old that have force feedback. I haven't found a game yet there. I've had to turn it on. Uh, next up, as I said earlier, um, we want all the output from this nine newton meter wheel, um, simply because we don't have enough to play around with. Uh, as I said, with the GT3 cars, they come in at around about 15 newton meters. So we're not going to get the full effect if we're for driving those, but it is what it is. We're just keeping that 100. Uh, hands off protection. Um, I've turned this off because it does impact your gameplay. Uh, what it does is 
stop the wheel dead in its tracks when it's spinning freely or it believes it's spinning freely. So if you've just gone through a tight radius corner and you're letting that wheel slip through your hands to return to center, as we've all done at junctions and stuff like that in our road cars, um, it will stop that wheel dead um, and hold it for a brief second and then let it return to center slowly, slower than you would like. Um, so if you come across a tight corner in a set of Corsa and you let that wheel slip through and you've got this on, um, you will have to pull the wheel back to center, um, which you do sometimes have to do in a road car, but when you're on throttle, it usually returns pretty quickly. Um, it is a nice safety feature though. So if you're worried about injuring your thumbs, um, if you're doing a lot of drifting, so on and so forth, um, that wheel could be spinning quite quickly. Um, you can leave this on, but it's just going to impede your drifting abilities, I believe. So just leave that off. But if you're concerned about the welfare of your thumbs, turn that on. Uh, natural inertia next. Um, this works in conjunction with dampening and wheel friction here. Um, it adds a natural weight to the wheel. Um, it also can help reduce steering wheel oscillations as well. Um, so the lower you have your dampening, you run the risk of getting steering oscillations. Uh, my settings that I've got here, I've got zero steering oscillations going on. Um, so I would recommend you try these out first and then just tweak them to your own preference. Um, wheel friction, I have put that at 55 because I felt that a set of course it was really light, unrealistically light um, on the micro movements of the wheel. So I've just added an extra 5% on that. Um, if you can't get a 5%, all you have to do, we'll just go in here. Uh, you just click on the numbers and then type in whatever you want. And then it will put the percentage that you've typed in. Uh, but typically when you drag in the bars, it will put it at uh, like 110%, 120, 130, so on and so forth. So if you're not happy with 110 or 120, you can type in 115 and get a more refined feel that you want. Uh, speed dependent dampening. Um, this has been quite buggy with the Moza software. It's, it doesn't seem to return the dampening back to normal when the speed is scrubbed off quick enough. Um, so for now, I've just left this off. Um, if you are messing around with this and you do want it on, uh, don't increase it too much. Probably no more than 10, 15% maximum because um, you're just going to lose that refined detail in the road uh, when you're driving at speed. So I just leave that off. Right, so FFB effect equalizer. This is where we fine tune all these lovely vibrations we're going to be feeling through the wheel. Uh, you can see here, this is where the individual things pop up in the frequency range. So we've got the frequency range down the bottom. This is what effects are incorporated into that frequency range. Um, you just got to be careful that when you move one, you will be adjusting that. So at 25 hertz, you adjust that. You're messing around with the ABS vibration. So I left that at 100. Uh, this one, so this is operating wheel body bumps. So these are like the bumps in the road and stuff like that that you'll feel. I'll put that on 130. Felt really nice. Um, then you've got your curb effects. I've put that at 140 just to get that wheel vibrating when you get over those uh, red and white curbs. Uh, then you've got faster curb effects down here. Uh, and then you got grass effects. I'll put that on 50 because I don't like it jostling around too much. Uh, and then you got high speed curb effects and sand effects. And then we've got the high frequency vibration. This can be a bit overbearing, so always keep this low. Um, I think for other games, I've had this on zero as well because it was just it just got in the way. It didn't feel right. Uh, but this high frequency vibration, if you got your wheel bolted to a rig, you will feel it through your pedals, um, even at 10%. So if you don't like it at 10%, take it to zero. Um, but obviously, if you want to increase it, just send it up, but don't send it up too high. Next up, we have FFB curve. I prefer it on linear, uh, but you can speed it up in the center or slow it down. I think that will speed. Uh, this one will speed it up in the center. Um, and that will make it faster during uh, towards the end of the travel. 
well, I just leave it unlinear because most of the time I'm driving cars that have a really short luck anyway. Uh, miscellaneous. Um, this is just uh, what it says. It's a status light indicator, temporary control, and soft luck limits. Uh, so the status indicator, that's just a blue light that appears uh, when I think the wheel's connected wirelessly. Um, I have it plugged into the PC, so I've never seen this. So you can have that on or off. Uh, soft limit stiffness does exactly what it says on the tin. When you reach the end of your steering travel, that's the, uh, that's the feeling you get when it hits the end of the travel. So if you want it hard, uh, and you don't want to physically be able to turn the wheel anymore, keep it on hard. If you like it soft and you want to be able to go over that limit, um, obviously put it on soft. Um, and then this is, once you've gone past that limit, how hard is the uh, the soft lock after that? Just to remind you that you've gone over the limit. So I have it on hard and hard. Um, soft limit game for strength now this is for games that have weak force feedback towards the end of the travel set of course it doesn't so you can leave this off if you turn it on it might uh, it might increase the weight towards the end of the travel so just leave this off obviously temper con temperature control um, what this would do is if the temperatures start to spike in your wheelbase it will clip the force feedback strength so if it gets too hot, if you have it on conservative, I think, what does it say there? It goes over above 50 degrees Celsius. So if it wheel goes over, wheelbase goes over 50 degrees in temperature, it will reduce the force feedback output in order to control those temperatures. If you want it to not do that, um, click radical. Uh, and that will let the temperatures go up to 60 degrees before it starts to clip the force feedback. Uh, I don't think I've ever had an issue with it temperature control within the wheelbase. So you can have it on either or. Just remember that when it comes to electronics, hotter temperatures generally degrade the product quicker. So if you want, uh, you will for life for the lifetime, stick it on conservative. But just know that it will be clipping if the temperatures start to get out of control. So that's everything in the pit house software. So I'm just going to move on to the game itself now. Um, and then in the game, uh, we see here that I've gone for 50% gain overall, um, simply because I do have access to one of the cars in the game. It's only a small one, Fiat 500 a bath. <laughs> Don't judge, please. It's what I could afford. Uh, the gain at 50% fell exactly what I was feeling through the steering wheel. And believe me, I've had a good play around with my car. So trust me. They'll be good for this, and hopefully all the other cars have been coded into the game in a similar manner to keep those realistic as well. Uh, filter, this removes the FFB spikes within the game, but we don't have enough newton meters for most of the cars in the game, so we don't filter those spikes out at all. Leave that on zero. And then we have minimum force. This increases the minimum weight you feel through the wheel, but it also increases the force feedback minimum force feedback effects as well so it kind of enhances them a little bit so you don't want this too high but you don't want it too low either um, i've settled on five percent for this and it gave a very good feeling in my opinion but you might feel differently you might want it slightly lower slightly higher or a lot higher or a lot lower uh, but that's what i've settled on anyway curve effects does exactly what it says on the tin um, it'll add a vibration when you go over the curbs uh, again higher means more vibration, lower, less vibration. Road effects, same as curb effects, but for the general rumble in the road that you feel through the wheel. Uh, again, higher will increase that effect, lower will decrease it. Slip effects. Um, so this will add a vibration when your wheels are slipping. So wheel spin, understeer, oversteer, this will add a vibration. Um, typically in a real life situation, you don't get any vibration when the wheels are slipping, uh, but obviously, we're in the sim world. We don't have the G-force effects unless you've got a motion simulator, but we're not that rich. Uh, so you want some effect to let you know that it's happening because your body can't feel it. Uh, but obviously you don't want it overpowering. So I've settled on 9% for this. Uh, ABS effects, obviously, if you're slamming on the brakes hard, 
Um, this will add a vibration into the wheel to let you know that the ABS is firing. Um, I've settled on 21%, which I believe is the game's default. Um, I haven't really noticed this at all, uh, but generally you won't get vibration through your steering wheel if your ABS is firing in the wheel world. So obviously you want to know it's there just to know that it's happening. Uh, so yeah, I've just left it on the default for that. Uh, steering settings, don't mess around with these. Uh, speed sensitivity, your steering wheel does not decrease in sensitivity when you're driving at speed ever. So leave that on zero. Um, it's more a placebo effect. Because um, obviously when you're driving at speed, your brain tells you not to yank that wheel at the risk of death. Um, so if you need that, uh, obviously increase it. But just know that in the real world, speed sensitivity isn't a thing. The steering wheel does not get less sensitive when you're driving at speed. Your brain thinks it, it does because it doesn't want you to kill yourself. Uh, brake gamma. This just changes the curve of the brake pedal. If you've got... Um, specific pedal software like I have for these Huskin valve pedals. Um, this will, you've already would have already done this there. So just leave that linear because your software will take control over that. Um, obviously, the higher you take it, the later the brakes will come in. So there's a lot of travel there before the brakes actually start to do anything. I just leave it on linear. And that's everything for this video. Um, if you like what I've done with these settings and you're really, really enjoying them, drop a like on the video. It really helps me gauge whether I'm doing good in the uh, the world of force feedback settings. If you have slightly tweaked these to your own preference, share them in the comments below, please. I know my settings are not the be all and end all. And everybody has a different interpretation of what a car should feel like when it comes to sim racing. So share them. Hopefully, when someone finds this video and my settings don't suit them, someone in the comments section below has got the perfect settings for them. So please share them. And yeah, that's everything. I hope you enjoy your day. I hope you enjoy the settings. Goodbye.